What's up, guys? We're back to count down the top five episodes of the lost season of the 2003 series. I know I usually do a top 10 list, but seasons 5 and 7 only had 13 episodes. Actually, season 5, the main subject of this video, only aired 12 episodes. The sixth episode of the season, Nightmares Recycled, was actually never even finished. If you want more info on that episode and the other lost episodes of the 2003 series, definitely check out the video that I made all about it. This is the season that took the entire Shredder story, flipped it upside down, and confused the hell out of most viewers. I'm sure we'll get plenty into the plot of this season while we go down the list, so let's not waste any more time. Here are my top 5 episodes of season 5 of the 2003 series. Honorable mention goes to past and present. Number 5, Fathers and Sons. Who doesn't love the Turtle Tots? After the Turtles see firsthand the unmatched strength of the Tangu Shredder, they're having serious doubts about defeating him. So Splinter tells the tale of bringing them all to Japan years ago, before they had ninja masks or weapons. Splinter really took the family to Japan to bury his late master Yoshi's ashes in his homeland, and to meet the Ancient One for the first time since his mutation. But the mystics are up to no good and have a weird skeleton ghost thing stalking the Ancient One. It's trying to infiltrate the tribunal and steal the Tengu Shredder's artifacts. The Turtle Tots were the only ones able to see this phantom, because the invisibility amulet that it had only worked on the wise and noble, not little turtles. The turtles, the Ancient One, and Splinter all defeat the ghost, and the turtles' minds are washed of these memories by the tribunal. At the very end of the episode, we saw the Ancient One give the turtles their very first ninja masks. It was always pretty cute hearing the turtles' voice actors all trying to sound like kitties. Any episode with the Turtle Tots is bound to be a classic. Number 4, Lap of the Gods. Yeah, I know I messed up the graphic. The first episode of the season, this one really set the tone of how things were going to be. The eight acolytes all arrive in Japan and are given the lowdown by the tribunal. An evil force is coming, and these selected acolytes must study, train, and perfect channeling their inner power, their Shi. The mystics only need three artifacts to awaken their master, and they already have two. The last is in possession of the tribunal. Splinter and the Ancient One show up unannounced because they're not just going to sit on the sideline during the most epic battle of the entire series. The tribunal creates a nightmare illusion in the heads of the acolytes, with a demon coming through the building and defeating them all. This was the first lesson from the Tribunal to the Acolytes. Donnie was seen being the first one to channel his she, which was pretty cool. You can't deny that those colors going through the turtles don't look badass. Number 3, Legend of the Five Dragons. This episode told the entire origin story of the original Shredder. It also gave us this line, which pretty much sums up the whole season. Is anybody gonna tell us what the shell is going on here? Real Shredder, True Shredder, Udrom Shredder? How many Shredders are there? First, Splinter tells the Turtles that if the Tribunal had not disregarded Yoshi's warning of the Utram Shredder, maybe he would not have died. The Tribunal never tried to stop the Utram Shredder during his years of terror, because at the end of the day, he was just an inferior imposter to the true Shredder. But the Tribunal was probably ignorant to the fact that Shirelle killed millions across the galaxy. But the real meat and potatoes of this one was the epic tale of the original Shredder. To summarize it briefly, the original Shredder was an evil Tengu that wanted to rule the world in Japan. Five warriors were to defeat it, and the most skilled of which was the original Oroku Saki. Saki was the one to slay the Tengu, but he allowed the evil into his soul, thus becoming the Tengu Shredder. The remaining four warriors, the Ninja Tribunal, trained their bodies and minds some more and eventually defeated the Tengu Shredder, but he could truly not be defeated, only sealed away. They put his body in a coffin and kept his gauntlet and his helmet separate. 
if these three things were ever put back together, the Tengu Shredder would rule again. I suggest going back and watching this episode for yourself. The story is just so epic. Seeing the Tribunal dressed in their Shredder armor, manifest into their dragon forms, and defeat the Tengu Shredder, it was just amazing. So two out of the five episodes on this list were flashback episodes, and the top two are both epic two-parters, and it was very hard to rank them apart. Number 2, New World Order, Parts 1 and 2. Well, it's happening. The Tengu Shredder has been reborn. I've always considered the second chapter for the Tengu Shredder to be nicknamed the Demon Shredder. He just looks more demon-like after being brought back by the Mystics. These episodes take place back in New York, which was awesome. The first order of business for the Demon Shredder was to kill Karai for being the current impersonator of the Shredder. Watching the Shredder and the Mystics hover through the city, destroying everything in their path was just sick. The Shredder makes quick work of the foot soldiers, their advanced technology, and even the elite guard. The highlight of the episode was Karai stabbing the Shredder, thinking that she killed the demon, but it was actually just touring with her, giving her a glimpse of her old father. Uh, father? My child. Father, I... And this was another funny moment. Um, awkward. This was the turtles' first real test of using their mystic weapons and channeling their Shi. The turtles manifest into their dragon forms and temporarily defeat the mystics and the demon shredder. The turtles aren't even sure if Karai is going to make it after their gruesome brawl, but the shredder now isn't set on just killing Karai. He wants to do what he originally intended all of those years ago, turn the world into his demon playground. On a side note, these episodes were the last time that we saw some awesome foot soldiers, like the foot tech and the elite guard. Number 1, Enter the Dragons, Parts 1 and 2. These episodes are just epic for too many reasons. The most important of which to me is that it's the last time that we see these turtles the way that we love them. Following this season, we got two more seasons with newly designed turtles and a much lighter tone. In a way, this could be considered an alternate kind of finale to the whole series. The Shredder has turned New York City into a demonic hell. The only option for the turtles is to team up with both old friends and old enemies. The Justice Force, the Human Acolytes, Bishop's Army and Stockman, the Purple Dragons, the Foot, and the Turtles must all work together or the world will be over. They're first able to defeat the Mystics, but the Shredder certainly won't be going down as easy. Because Karai is currently portraying the Shredder, she somehow has a link to the Demon Shredder, so she plays a big part in taking him down. The Demon Shredder and the Turtles all manifest into their dragon forms, and the Turtles are able to separate the Demon's helmet and gauntlet, weakening him back into his human form. Or his normal form, I guess. The absolute best parts of the episodes was the Turtles using their Shi to manifest Hamato Yoshi, and it was only fitting that he dealt the final blow to the Demon. Just watch this moment and try not to feel some kind of way. Master Yoshi. This really was the perfect ending. The Tribunal can now rest, and they have a new fifth member, the Ancient One. Splinter had his moment with his old master, Karai and Chapman seem to be a couple now, and the Turtles have once again defeated their arch nemesis, the Shredder. There's no way another Shredder could show up. Oh wait. So, how did you guys feel about my list? Definitely drop your top 5 episodes from the season in the comments down below. This season really was great. I feel like it being only 12 episodes long made it the perfect length to tell the story. Although the story got confusing for some people, I still feel like this was really well done. 
and it would have been a true travesty if this lost season never saw the light of day. And this video was pretty cool to make. I usually have to do top 10 lists and they take a lot longer. I pretty much cut the time in half that it takes me to make a video or a top 10 list and it was pretty cool so. Next up is season 4 of the 2012 series which was epic in its own right. Until next time guys, peace out.